suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. If people were truly moral, there would be no need for moral precepts. We are carefully taught and constantly reminded of how we should act. And the reason for this must be that man is fundamentally bad. In any case, all too often, kindness is not repaid in kind. The golden rule is broken, and the hand that feeds gets bitten. Of such ingratitude is our story concerned. A story which should at least serve as a warning to those ladies who stubbornly insist on letting their hair grow as nature intended it to. Listen... Listen, then, as Frank Lovejoy stars in Friend of Daddy, which begins in just a minute. Hello? Oh. <laughs> Rosa? What? 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 Who is she? Who's who? Who were you dreaming about? Was I dreaming? You were talking in your sleep and giggling. How about that? What were you giggling about? I can't remember. Joseph? You mentioned a girl's name. Oh? What name? Spot. Spot? Yes, Spot. Candy Spot. It sounded like a dancer or a striptease or something. Oh. Oh, what? Well, I must have said Candy Spots. Candy Spots is a horse. I bet on him once. You bet on a horse? Yeah, we had a pool. I could have won three dollars. Well, you should have put the money into savings bonds. They're a much better investment. It was only 50 cents. For 63 cents a day, you can buy a $25 bond a month. And one year's worth of bonds will bring $300 when they mature. What's more, they're guaranteed to be winners. The whole United States stands behind them. Uh Uh-huh. So don't waste money betting on horses. Put it in savings bonds. Okay. Can I still dream about horses, though? If you do it quietly. Say, why were you giggling about a horse? And now, Friend of Daddy, starring Mr. Frank Lovejoy, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Give me that pistol. Ow. Don't you ever do that again. You give a person a heart attack scaring him like that. Give me my gun. Give me my gun. Carry a bell across the mouth. I- I'm sorry, mister. I didn't mean to scare you. All right, Kim. Just don't ever do that again. I won't. I promise I won't. Hey. What's your name? Butch. Yeah? My name's Butch, too. It is? Yeah. I bet your last name's Carson. That's right. How'd you know? Because you look like your daddy. You know my daddy? I know him in the war in Korea. I was just looking for his house. It's right there. Oh, he's at work. Oh? But Mommy's home. Well, then let's go see Mommy, okay? <laughs> okay, I guess. Oh, can I have my gun back? <laughs> sure. Hey, you are, Butch. Only remember what I said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did I say? I oughtn't to give people a heart attack so I'd get a belt in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, uh... Not it exactly, so uh, let's forget about it, okay? Okay. Because we're going to be friends, aren't we, Bush? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Hey, Mommy, somebody wants to see you. Who is it? A man. Well, tell him I don't want any. He's a friend of Daddy. Oh, well, just a minute. I'm sorry. I thought it was a salesman. I just washed my hair and I was drying it out back. Very pretty, your hair. <sighs> Butch said you were a friend of my husband's? Oh, yes. I'm Butch Bailey. Butch Bailey. Well, at last we meet. Butchie, this is Daddy's best friend from the Korean War. I know. Oh? You two have already met? Oh, yes, yes. Out front. I was ambushed. Oh, yes. (laughs) Young Maverick's quite a shot with those cat pistols. Won't you sit down? Thank you. He ought to be getting home any minute. I know he'll be so glad to see you. It's been a long time. Can I get you something? A can of beer or something? No, thank you. I'm fine. Well, if you excuse me a minute, I'll do up my hair. No. No, no, please. Leave it the way it is. 
<laughs> it's so pretty. Well, I... You don't see long hair like that much these days. I guess I'm just old-fashioned. I've never cut it. I don't. Don't ever. <laughs> I'll never forget the look in that sergeant's face when you told him if he wanted some commie prisoners, he could find plenty. Right out there across the yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, I know it. <laughs> Who went out to get them? I did. But I'd never have gotten back if it hadn't been for you. Ah, forget it. More coffee, anyone? Yes, thanks. I'll have another cup. But, well, then what happened? It's way past your bedtime. That's what that is. Oh, Mom. Come on now. Come it's on. Just let me stay up for one more story. All right, but you've had it run along. But, Pa. Right now. Okay, okay. I'll come in and tuck you in, honey. Say goodnight to Daddy's friend. Will you tell me some more stories about the war sometime? Oh, sure, Butch. When? Oh, I don't know. Sometime. Run along now, Butch. All on. right. I'm going. Night. Night, son. Quite a kid, Pete. Funny coincidence you're calling him Butch. It isn't a coincidence. He was christened Bailey Carson. You named him after me? Well, he wouldn't be here if it weren't for you, because I wouldn't be here now if it weren't for you. It's good to know that there's a kid growing up carrying your name. <laughs> Me, I got nobody, no family, nothing to tie to. Oh, that's no way to talk, Butch. The right girl's bound to come along and... Oh, not for me. Who'd have me? A gimp with a bad ticker who spent most of the best years of his life in veterans' hospitals? Yeah, but that's all over now. What are your plans? Plans? Oh, I don't have any. What good are plans? Then we'll make some for you. Look, Butch, why don't you stay here with us for a while? Oh, I, I couldn't do that. Oh, sure you can. We've got a little room off the garage. It isn't much, but we could fix it up, couldn't we, darling? Oh, uh, well, yes, of course we could. No, I couldn't just walk in on you. Now, listen to me, Butch. I'm a very happy man, and I owe my happiness. I owe my life to you. You don't forget a death like that. I've worried about it for years. I've wondered where you were and how you were, and suddenly you show up. My turn now to help you. Nothing as dramatic as saving your life, but at least I can help you get started on a new life. But... No buts, are there, darling? No. You're moving in as of now. No, darling. Yes, please. I was thinking... Hmm? About what? Pete. Yes, darling? Don't let him stay here. What are you talking about? Of course he can stay here. Please? I'm afraid. Of what? Of him. Of old Butch with his game leg? Oh, now don't be silly. I'm not. I'm afraid. I don't know. I don't know. And now, starring Mr. Frank Lovejoy, Act Two of Friend of Daddy's. Oh, oh, good morning. What time is it? Late. Pete's gone to work already. Oh, I'm sorry. Some coffee on the stove. Help yourself. Thank you. I've got to get ready to take Butchie in town to get it. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll find things okay. Butchie. Yeah, honey. You dressed? Hurry up. I'll be ready as soon as I finish brushing my hair. What are you doing here? Watching. Get out of my bedroom. My mother always brushed her hair a hundred times every morning and every night. You brush your hair a hundred times, Louise? I said get out of here. I just want to watch. You don't see long hair like yours anymore. 
So soft and fine, like my mother's. Just like my mother's. Let me touch it, Louise. Just once. Let me feel it. Get out or I'll scream. Please. Please. Oh, please. Get out, you. Dirty. Dirty. Yes. Oh. Oh, send her in. Pete. Honey, what are you doing down here in the middle of the morning? Pete. That horrible man. Who? What horrible man? That buddy of yours, Butch Bailey. Oh, what did he do? I was brushing my hair. And I looked up, and there he was standing in the door watching me. Well, I don't blame him. You make an awfully pretty picture brushing your hair. For you, Pete. Not for anybody else. Well, then you should close your door. In my own house? Pete, listen to me. Your friend is crazy. Oh, come on. I now. told you I was afraid of him, and I was right. He had a look in his eye. Now, aren't you imagining a lot of this? No. He wanted to... He wanted to steal my hair. I had to push him out of the room with all my strength. Of course, he had no right coming into the room. And then when I finally got up enough courage to come out, he was sitting in the breakfast nook drinking coffee as cool as a cucumber, so nothing had happened. But, but that, that, that look that was still in his eyes, I, I can't describe it. Well, I'll... Uh... I'll have a little talk with old Butch tonight. Pete, you don't seem to understand. Talking won't do any good. Get rid of him. But I can't just throw him out. If you don't, I'll take Butchie and check into a hotel. Oh, Louise, you're being child. No, I'm not. I'm not going back to that house until that man has left. Well, I, I, I know this is upset you and all that, but try to understand the poor guy. He's been in hospital for years with all those ugly nurses. And when he sees a woman as beautiful as you are, he's... Pete, listen to me. I did some checking at the Veterans Administration on my way over here. Your friend Butch Bailey has been in and out of Veterans Hospitals ever since Korea True. But not for a crippled leg. For a crippled mind. He's a psychopath. <laughs> That's the way it is, pal. I say. I'm sorry, but you know how women are. Oh, sure, sure. I never should have come here. Oh, now, don't say that. I don't want to cause you any trouble, Pete. You've got it made. A beautiful wife, 12 kids, no place for me in this setup. Now, look, Butch. Well, that's what you're telling me, isn't it? But you make it sound like it is. Your wife says get rid of the bum, so you get rid of the bum. You're not making it easy. Why should I? No, no, no. Wait, wait a minute. As, as you were, I'm not sore. See, I understand. I shouldn't have done what I did. I know that, but I didn't mean any harm. I was just looking at her. I know, Butch. I understand, but she doesn't. And she's my wife. Yeah, and you stick to her, kid. You got a wonderful woman there. Well, I better shove off till Louise can get back in her own house. Where are you going? Who knows? Who cares? I do. Look, Butch, what can I do for you? Do you need anything? Can I lend you some money until you get on your feet? No, thanks. Pete, I'll be all right. You do understand. Sure. Oh, sure. What do you say? Come on, Bud. Darling? Yeah? You didn't mind too much, did you? What about Butch? Yes. Look, baby. You're my wife. You come first. First get it before anybody. Oh, Pete. Oh, hey, hey, look at the time. We better hit the sack. I'll go ahead and get ready for bed. Yes, and I'll lock all the doors and the windows. Oh, don't be silly. Hey? Yeah? Uh -huh. You see my hair, Brush? Oh, why? I can't find it on my dressing table. It's gone. You sure you could... Now, what would I want with your hairbrush? I don't know. I wonder what Butch would want with it.
And now, starring Mr. Frank Lovejoy, Act Three of Friend of Daddy's. Outside and play while I get dinner on the sofa. Huh? Hello? Huh? Where are you, darling? At the office. I was just going to start dinner. Yes, I know. That's, uh, that's what I'm calling. No, but uh, I do have to stay in town. Well, <laughs> Oh, please. I'm sorry, darling, but it's the least I can do. I suppose so. Thought he'd left town. He had. He's been back east for a couple of months, but I guess things didn't pan out for him. I won't be late. Promise? Promise. See you later. Bye, darling. Hello, Louise. <laughs> Butch. What are you doing here? I couldn't stay away. <sighs> Pete on the phone. He said... I, I know. He said he was meeting me downtown. I made that date with him to be sure he wouldn't come home and interrupt us. Interrupt? What do you want? Take down your hair. I certainly will not. Louise, please do me a favor. Take down your hair. That's all I ask. Just take it down. Ridiculous. Now get out of here. Get out. You won't take down your hair when I ask you nicely? Of course not. But I have to make you take it down. Put, put away that gun. Not until you've let your hair down. You wouldn't use it. Oh, yes, I would. Even if I had to kill you, your hair would still be alive. Hair goes on growing, you know, after death. Oh, no, but... Go on, you would. Take out the pins. Oh, that's right. At the back. Now fluff it out. Just like Mother used to. Butch, please. Oh, that's it. That nice and loose, like a living frame to your face. Now, here. Here's your brush. This is the one I took. Use it. Go on. Brush out a hundred times. Brush it until it crackles. Until it's soft. It's angels down. Butch. Oh, go on, go on, go on. I'm sorry about taking that brush, Louise. You see, I thought that would be enough, but it wasn't. Reminded me of you. The mother. Not enough. Not enough. I had to come back. I had to watch you using it. Don't you understand? When you're very little, you're very, very little, you're lying in your crib at night, and your mother comes to tuck you in, she leans over you. And her hair, her beautiful long hair, falls down around you in a warm, sweet web of protection. You're safe. No harm can come to you. That tickles your nose a little. Maybe you chuckle. Maybe you sneeze. And you're playing with it. Pulling it a little, maybe. It smells like heaven. You fall asleep dreaming of angels and every one of them looking like your mother. Looking like you. This is crazy. But now you've got to leave. Oh, let me touch it. Let me run my fingers through it. Stay away from it. I won't hurt you, I promise. I want to feel it. I want to bury my face in no. it. No. No. I won't hurt you. Stop it. Stop Louise, it. Louise, don't try to stop me. Get away from me. Now you're going to let I'm me. I'm not going to let you do Alive anything. Alive or dead, I'll still have your hair. If you're dead. You're choking me. Yes, Louise, I'm choking you with your own hair. If I have to use force, I will. Louise. Oh, Louise. My butch. You are not saying that. Ah. You're dead. Boy, I told you never to go around scaring people with that gun. I know, Marty. I shouldn't ever shoot the gun in the house. I, I forgot. <laughs> this time I'm glad you did. What's the matter with what? Did I give him a heart attack? Baby, I... I don't know. He said I shouldn't scare people and give them heart attacks. It's all right, dear. It's all right. Hello? Pete. 
Come home right away. But I'm waiting for Butch. Butch is here. He's had an attack or something. Call the veterans hospital and tell him to come and get him. Hurry home, Pete. Please hurry. in Friend of Daddy. Written, produced, and directed by William N. Robeson. Supporting Frank Lovejoy and Friend of Daddy's were Kathy Lewis, Bill Quinn, and Dick Beale. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Robert Horton starring in Foiled for Victor, another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.